statement as, um, as leader of the Green Group and as my colleague, and uh, I'm supportive of what she's saying. Um, right, so here we are at the end of a council year of missed opportunity and myopic ambition. As with other strategic policy documents this year, the new local transport plan is devoted to a single growth model that is alien to Herefordshire and does not play to any of the county's existing strengths. Alongside the core strategy, you are still trying to create a basing stoke in the marches, in the mistaken belief that the economy alone is infallible and that the environmental and social elements are merely less important addendums. This is a local transport plan that is almost wholly focused on the city, and I absolutely agree with the point made earlier, and fails to adequately understand or enhance the economic and social bonds that link market towns to one another and to adjoining counties. Two thirds of the county's population live in rural locations or market towns. The city centric view fails completely to recognise this, and the only supporting policies of public transport are based on travel into or out of the city, as shown on the priority network of core bus services map. Rural buses are mentioned in the local transport plan, policy PT1, and yet they are still being cut ahead of this debate. This is a local transport plan that offers nothing new or innovative, where the car is king and road building is lauded as the only solution to transport and economic growth problems. The hierarchy of transport modes referenced in LDP policy DC1 is cited as a mere consideration that need only be adhered to where appropriate or if possible, rather than the enabler of sustainable economic, social and environmental growth. This flies in the face of the government's own public health briefing published this month, written for transport planners, among others. It looks at the impact of current transport systems and sets out the many benefits of active travel. It suggests that while motorised road transport has a role in supporting the economy, a rebalancing of our travel system is what is needed. Something that is sorely missing in this LTP, as in previous strategic documents, where road building is seen as the driver of economic growth. This short-sightedness and outmoded thinking is compounded by the mistaken belief that disproportionate investment in the city of Rolos enterprise zone will provide a trickle-down effect that will automatically benefit the rest of the county. According to figures quoted at Open Human Scrutiny Committee, only some 254 net jobs out of a potential 4,000 target have so far been created, despite the amount of money poured into it. Some 10 million investment, according to the recent April 2016 March's annual report. Now we're being told that we haven't realised the potential growth because we need a new southern imprint. Once in place, everything will be okay and the enterprise zone will really take off. Well, it's not okay from our point of view, and it's not okay from the LTP's own strategic environmental assessment findings. It's not okay to destroy irreplaceable ancient woodland or tear an unnecessary scar across the countryside, countryside that is in itself a major driver of economic, social, and environmental sustainable growth, the very USP that makes heritage so special. All this for just 250 net, 54 net jobs so far? How much investment per job created is this? And why is this better value for money than supporting the smallholders and supporting our small businesses, tourism, and all the other uh, interlinked parts of our local community? In this local transport policy, tourism receives only a passing reference in the introduction to the public rights of way section. According to the March's uh, website, recent figures show visitors to Herefordshire, Shropshire, and Telford region combining overnight tourism and day visitor spend produce more than one <coughs> billion for the local economy a year. So why are ignoring such an important uh, aspect in one of our key strategic policies? Linking tourism, am I right time? Can I feed into my own thing then? Because much of this is what I would be saying. So if with your indulgence, well, it's supposed I'll... to be her statement of yours. That's fine. That That's fine, because I absolutely agree with this, and it's much of what I would emphasize. So can I carry on to my own bit? You can say what you wish. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to continue with Jenny in that case. So um, linking to
tourism to public transport. It may interest fellow members to know that our recent research in the Gulf of Bus Patronage in Leicester and North Herefordshire, South Shropshire, shows that bus passenger numbers go up in the summer when they are heavily used by tourists and day visitors. This rise in patronage more than replaces the absence of students and school children in term time. Our, in our local transport plan needs to be an enabler of choices and opportunities for economic, social and environmental growth, not a millstone that stifles diversity and leaves us with such disproportionately heavy costs that we must pay for other mechanisms. Air quality links to early mortality, and is a major issue of course in the Leicester, and health problems are headline news again. How much does this cost in terms of NHS resources and quality of life? What costs of repairing local roads? We share them with large lorries, such as those serving the, uh, the, the many, um, uh, many industries, or shouldering the economic and environmental costs of highly polluted watercourses. We do need dedicated enterprise business growth with housing and infrastructure, but we need them delivered in a sustainable and county wide way that will enhance and bolster this unique and beautiful and diverse county. If we can interpret this local plan with this vision in mind, then how much more valuable economic, social and environmental triple bottom line growth can we achieve now 